Got another question here on the uh, 13 rates of reaction topic. So up to number 10 now. As always, the link to the question is in the description of the video. Okay, so for the first part of the question, we've got to use these results here to support this rate equation. So basically, we've got to show that the order with respect to hydrogen peroxide is 1, likewise for I minus, and we've got to show that the order with respect to H plus is 0, because it's not in the rate equation. So if you have a look at experiments 1 and 2, you can see I minus and H plus don't change. So the H2O2 concentrations doubled, and the rate has also doubled. So it's first order with respect to H2O2. So I would literally just summarise it like that. There's no need to write a waffly sentence. So if we look at 2 and 3 now, you can see that these are held constant. So we can see the effect of the change in the H plus concentration. So you can see that's doubled. The rate hasn't changed. So that's zero order. So I've just put that there. Instead of putting rate times 1, you could put rate unchanged if you want. But... What I've written is fine. And then to get the remaining one, so the I minus, I'm going to use 2 and 4. So I've chosen those two because the H plus concentration is constant. It's zero order anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, let's go for this. So two and, using 2 and 4, the hydrogen peroxide concentration is doubled. And so has the I minus concentration. So if we have a look at the overall rate change... It's actually gone up four times so that means that both of these reactants must be first order because the hydrogen peroxide has doubled we know that that's first order so 2 to the power 1 is 2 so that would cause a doubling in the rate and if the rate's gone up another two times from a doubling of I minus that's also going to be first order so I've just said from 2 and 4, both the H2O2 and I- minus concentrations have doubled. The rate's gone up four times, so the both must be first order. So to get the K value, I've rearranged the rate equation, so it goes to that. I've used the numbers from row 1. You can use any of the experiments. They're all done at the same temperature. So we've got those numbers there. So we'll calculate the value of that. And to two significant figures and standard form we get that. Okay, so I'll just quickly explain the units now. So I've replaced the numbers with the units of the things in the K expression. And we'll just cancel that moles per decimeter cubed with one of them. So, and then we'll just take these up to the top and flip the sign. So we get dm to the 3, mol to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. Part B, the students concluded that the H plus ions are acting as a catalyst. Why is it not correct? Well, you can see the H plus ions are being used up in the overall reaction equation. So it can't be a catalyst as they're not being reformed. What's meant by the term rate determinant step? That's simply just the slowest step in a reaction mechanism. And the final part of the question, so it's a bit awkward this, four step mechanism and we've been given step three. So I've just copied and pasted the uh, overall equation. I've just written out the rate equation again to save me going backwards and forwards. So the first thing to say is that the rate equation, the species in the rate equation, tell us what's involved in the rate determinant step. And it says that the slowest step is step one. So we must have those species as the reactants of step one, the rate determinant step. Next thing I would do is look at the overall equation and see if I can make any of the products from what I've got in the rate determinant step. Can't make the I2 because I've only got one I. I could make one of those H2Os. So we'll do that, and then we'll just lump the remaining atoms together, which gives us an I or minus ion. The charges have to balance as well. Now you can see there isn't any I or minus in the overall equation, so we need to get rid of that. So if we make that a reactant of step two, look at what else we need. We need an H, we need two H pluses actually. So if we bring one into play for a reactant of step two, and if you look at the First um, reactant of step three, HIO, well, we can make that now. So that's obviously where we need to go now. Okay, so I'm just going to pause now and just reflect on what we've got. We've got the three, the first three steps. We've got the overall equation. So what we can do, if we add all of these steps together, we can then compare what's in those, the sum of those three steps, sorry, with what's um, needed for the overall equation. 
and then we can find out if we're missing anything or if we need to cancel anything out. Okay, so the sum of steps one to three give us, well, that's the full thing, and then I've cancelled out the common term. So we've got that left. So what's missing? Well, we need another H plus. We also need to cancel this OH minus, and we're missing an H2O. So we've only got one, we need two. So that is the answer.